All right, I think we're live. All right, well, welcome back. Uh, Bench Doctor's been on vacation for the last two weeks, and we did, you know, uh, inconsequential stuff like disabilities and firearms. But now we're going to come back to uh, him. Uh, he's not just going to take a gun apart. He's going to break it and use a saw. Uh, so he's going to build a trench gun out of a Model 12 shotgun circa, I believe, somewhere in the 1930s. But with that, if you guys have questions, drop them into the Zoom chat. Uh, if you're on Discord, drop them into the Discord chat. Uh, if you're watching this live on the other channels, uh, consider becoming a member, and then we'll answer your questions. Uh, so without further ado, we turn, turn it over to Scott. Welcome back. Uh, hey. it sounds like Vegas is a gas. Yep. You get to shoot some machine guns. And now you're going to tell us all about a lovely slam fire shotgun that you're going to do horrible things to. I'm going to violate this poor gun on live on the air. Hi. Well, welcome back. Um, as Ed said, this is an old ni <clears throat> 1936 era uh, Model 12, 12 gauge shotgun. And I've wanted a uh, World War I or World War II era uh, trench gun for the longest time, but they're ridiculously expensive. They're four or $5,000 if you can find them. And I uh, just didn't want to pony up that much money. Um, so I decided to build one and started researching it and figured out all the pieces that I need and um, was watching some uh, online auctions and I got a hold of this old Model 12 uh, for a really good deal and figured it would be a great, uh, great gun to start with. So my choices were the 1897 uh, Winchester, uh, the Model 12 or the um, Ithaca 37 and the Model 12 is just, I ended up on that just because that's the gun that uh, I was successful in buying. But um, so first of all, I'm going to start by just taking this thing apart and showing you uh, how to break one down. Should you have one or should you be interested in them? They're absolute tanks. Uh, I took this thing out last week and just test fired it and slam fired double odd buck through it and it handled it like a champ. So um, now that I'm sure everything works, um, today I'm going to take it apart, show you how it works, put it back together and chop the barrel off of it. So this is, these are really neat old guns. As you can see, it is uh, empty. I have a chamber flag in there and I have no, nothing in the magazine. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, take out my chamber flag. You can see that that's empty. Okay, the neat thing about these is they're a takedown gun. They come apart super easily. Up here at this end of the barrel, you have this little rod right here. You push it out and then you rotate the barrel a quarter of a turn, pull back on the slide. And now you can just take the gun apart into two, two, two pieces just like that. So it's a great little pack gun, you know, if you, uh, or, you know, for a great little field gun, throw it in a little bag and you don't look like you're carrying a big, big 12 gauge shotgun around. Um, now I'm not going to take this piece apart. I did it once to clean this thing because it looked like it came out of the La Brea tar pits. Um, and I really don't want to have to put this mechanism back together uh, right in front of you. Ed's already got enough fodder of me fumbling around. And uh, so I don't want to do it with this. There's, there's several little pieces and things that you have to do. And there's a little spring right up under here, a little flat spring that uh, prevents the magazine tube from rattling against the barrel. And so getting all this aligned and uh, put back together is a bit of a chore. But some of the features of this gun is once again, that it's a field, uh, you know, the um, takedown model, which is kind of neat. And the trench guns were, uh, the Model 12 trench guns were takedowns to the 1897s. Uh, I, I don't believe were the, they, they, they did make them as takedowns, but I don't think they used the takedown model for trench guns. I could be wrong, but that's my understanding at this point. Um, so anyway, well, we'll start with taking apart the receiver. I'll set my barrel aside and we will proceed to violate it later. Um, so right back here, you can remove this stock. There is a screw up under the butt plate. If you take this butt plate off, there's a screw 
way up inside there that uh, you need a really big long screwdriver to get in there and take it loose. And that's all that, that uh, that's all that's holding this stock to the receiver. I'm not going to do it right now because uh, it's kind of boring, but uh, from here we can take this apart and I'll show you how to take apart the action of the gun. You just have this little screw back here and this screw comes out and now your, tr your trigger uh, comes out, the whole trigger body and all these pieces. Now I'm not gonna take this any further apart uh, because they're just not fun to put back together. Um, but this one was just caked in uh, just black tar. So I, I sprayed it down really well with some brake clean and got in there and cleaned it up. And then I had to file down this surface right here on this little sear where you uh, unlock you know, you'll, this lever travels up over this and there was a big burr right there. So when you went to unlock the, the action or unlock the slide, it was really crunchy. So that was really the only thing I did in there uh, other than clean it up. So once you got that done, now we can take the bolt out and you'll see there's a little, um, I'll just go ahead and pop it out. It just sets in there. There's nothing holding this piece in place. It just popped right out and then it, sets in a little recess inside the uh, receiver wall. And then we have to remove the extractor, which uh, explaining this, uh, showing it, I'd, I'd rather just pop it out and show it to you when the thing's apart than try to explain it to you. Uh, but this just pops right out. And what it does is it's, you when you put it in, you have to slide, you have to compress the spring and slide it in beside the bolt. The bolt's up here and the receiver wall is right next to it. And then this rounded part, this head of it fits into a little uh, slot on the, in the receiver. So let me go ahead and get the bolt out. Got to involve a hammer, don't we, Ed? I'm okay. not saying then, nothing. Yeah, uh, and then the, to get the bolt completely out, uh, let me see if I can get this up close to the camera. There's this little tab right here in the gun right there. And I just flip that and it kind of unlocks it and allows the bolt to come out. And then I usually just turn it over, lock it out of there. Get you out of there, come on. There we go. So there's the bolt. And uh, one of these extractors was really loose. So I had to get in and tighten this little screw up. Uh, this gun is a little bit dirty because I took it out last week and test fired it after I took it all apart. But that's your bolt assembly. And this is your receiver. And right down here, I don't know if this is showing up, there's a little you'll see a little circular indentation. That's where that little extractor spring sets. And then right up here is another circular indentation. And that's where this piece goes. It just sets in there like so. So that gives you some idea of how that goes together, but it's easier to show it to you with the, the gun apart. So that's pretty much it for taking one of these down and uh, for you know field cleaning it. Uh, that's as far as you normally need to do it. Let me go over to the computer here. I got a message popped up. Close that. So let's go ahead and put it back together and cut it up, cut it, and cut it apart. So this just drops right back in. So this is where you tease us that you're going to be able to put it back together, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll get it back together. Famous last words. Yeah. Hey. It's not French. I get this to drop into place. It goes in at a really weird angle, and I always have to kind of jiggle it a little bit, seesaw it back and forth to get it in there, but it will drop. Same as so last words. Yeah, no, it'll <laughs> go. You said you had a uh, Model 12, right? I do. I have a Model 12. Mine was built in. Uh, uh, in early 1900s, so yeah, it's older 19... than years. 
I'm pretty so sure mine what, was built in World War One. They saw action in World War One. Oh, uh, well, send it out to me. We'll trench gun it. No, so, no, totally not. No. <laughs> Putting this gun back together, you got to make sure that uh, this bolt goes down. You'll see there's a recess right here. There's a kind of a circular uh, indent right. Uh, let's see if we can get it. Down in the frame, down, down, down. Yeah, I'm just trying to right there you in go. here. Yeah. So we need this bolt to set down in there so that our action bar will grab it. So what I do is I push down on the tail of it and then I click this little lock back in place and that kind of keeps it where it needs to be. So now what I have to do is I have to take this little spring, like I said before, I have to compress it with one finger and then slide it between the bolt and the receiver wall. So it's a little bit of a uh, trick to get it in there. It's not difficult, it just takes a little uh, practice. So I have to hold it with one finger and get it. I wish I could show you this, but it just, it, my hands just have to be in the way. So just you're kind of doing it by feel. It's really not easy to see it. Rotate it that way. You got to feel it fall into the little slot and then push and slide forward there. So now it's sitting right in here you can see the little extractor uh, tilt, tilt, tilt tilt forward tilt forward tilt forward more 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 no the other way other way the other way there you go <laughs> i don't know if you can see that little tab right there but that, uh, it's we see something that resembles a tab yeah the, it's right here behind the bolt forward, so forward, that forward, forward 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 a little more there you go so it, back, that spring too much trouble it it's that spring has to slide in between that bolt and this receiver wall so once that's in place we can then take this piece and it goes in just like that and this round protrusion goes into there's a round uh, indentation right here in the receiver wall and it just sits in there and seesaws there's nothing really holding it in place uh, except for the trigger group. So that just sits in there and it kind of seesaws up and down a little bit. So to now replicate we, what you're about to do to the gun, do you need to do any of this just as general principle? No, no. Uh, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the barrel off the receiver. It's just easier to work with that way, but you can cer certainly do it with, with it on the gun. Uh, just a little more unwieldy. But this internal is sort of more of a, a primer on how, how yeah we, just how these go together uh, yeah it. i mean uh, there's a lot of you know uh, some people are, are uh, intimidated by older guns thinking they're super complicated or or um you know whatever and i you know i figured out oh, we'll just show how simple these old guns really were they're not uh not too bad so then this just goes together like that you push your tube back into place like so, and then you know, I'm pushing down on the top of the magazine tube to get it uh, to rotate here, like so. So that's it. That's all there is to taking one of these apart and putting it back together. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take it apart now split it in half again and modify it. And this method works for the few shotguns that I have cut down, never below 18 inches, of course. Wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. Um, yeah, well, I, let me, the ATF guy doesn't like that. Yeah, well, he's ATF's guy, he's got to prove it. Uh, so, well, let me put this back together and I'll show you how I got my measurement for how to cut this barrel. Uh, let me get a something to stand the gun up in over here. And I'll show you how to do it. Let me get this where I can get it on screen a little bit. And hold this tight. Something to hold the gun. Come on, clamp down, please. 
Okay, so what I need is 20 and a half inches uh, from inside the, uh, the chamber, you know, from, from where the end of the chamber is. So to know what that measurement is, what I do is I just take a dowel and I run it down the barrel. You gotta make sure the action is completely closed because that way the bolt is all the way forward. So you run this down until it hits the bolt face. Now I make a mark. This is the, let me get on screen here. If I can tilt it up here. So I make a mark where my barrel currently ends. And that, that's the length of the barrel right now. You can see that little mark. Okay. So now I want to determine what 20 inches is, uh, 20, and a, 20 and a half inches. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to lay this on top and line up that mark with the end of the barrel. So now I can measure from this rod and I know what that internal uh, measurement is rather than stick a tape measure down the bore and have no way to know, you know what the measurement is from inside. This is just kind of translating that. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I do it. Somebody may have a better idea, but this works for me. Right there. I just tape that on there, make sure that my line is still aligned with the end of the barrel. Okay, like so. So now I take my tape measure and I measure from the back of the dowel to 22 and a half, which is what I need it to be for, that's according to the instructions uh, from the hand, the handguard manufacturer. So I make my mark at 22 and a half. I'm gonna give myself an extra 16th of an inch so that I can reface this, uh, the front of this barrel and deburr it and file it and polish it. So, um, I'm gonna give it just a 16th of an inch longer and then translate that mark over to the barrel. So right about there. Okay, does that make sense? Are there any questions about doing that uh, before I take it apart? I don't see any questions in okay. either of the chats so far. Yeah, because I, I don't know, you know, how else do you take the barrel off the gun and you're not, and you're measuring it, you're not measuring it from the bolt face, you're measuring it from the end of the barrel. And uh, so I wanted to make sure I was measuring it from the correct dimension. Sometimes you could easily uh, cut a barrel too short if you don't do it right. And too short is bad with shotgun barrels. Um, so let me go ahead and take this tape off. Uh, the ATF guy's looking. Yeah, too short's bad. Yeah, yeah short's bad. <laughs> short's bad in this context. I, I may occasionally just sort of flash the ATF. Yeah. Just, just, be, just because, you know. Yeah, you know, just keep me honest. So there's a couple of ways that you can cut this um, at your mark. Uh, one way is to take a hose clamp and you put it on the barrel and you clamp it down. And uh, that gives you a guide all the way around as you're cutting. You know, it, it just keeps your, it's, it's a fairly hard material and it keeps your, your hacksaw blade square as you cut down. Another way that I found to do it is to take a tubing cutter. You gotta be careful because shotgun barrels are tapered and you wanna make sure you're not on uh, the tapered end of a barrel because all you'll do is cut threads, you know, down the face of the barrel. So you wanna be where the barrel is a consistent diameter. But I just line this up right where my mark is. And I'm not gonna use this to cut the barrel because this, this metal is pretty hard stuff. All I'm gonna do is use it to scribe a line for me. So I just clamp that down, take it around a little bit, keep cutting. And I'm gonna do this a few times until I get a little bit of a uh, groove and that acts a little bit as a, as a hacksaw guide, you know, a little bit of a um, trench for the hacksaw blade to bite into, and it keeps you kind of square. Uh, I'm not terribly worried about this coming out really un, uh, unsquare, as long as it's not, you know, at a complete, you know, 30 degree angle, um, you're okay, because I, I left myself enough meat 
to sand this down, I take a file and file it. And then I uh, try to match the factory uh, crown, whatever that is. Uh, some of them were, had a bevel on the inside and the outside. Some of them were rounded. Um, so just cutting this line. This thing doesn't really want to bite. This is made for brass and copper and I'm completely abusing it on hardened steel, but it does the job. I'd rather sacrifice a cheap tool. Trench, a trench for the trench gun. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, let's see. We're just, we're just uh, stress testing this tubing cutter. So, see, I'm already committed at this point. I've put a nice gash in the barrel, so we're committed to our course of action here. Tighten that down a little bit. Okay. So I want to just shout out to everybody who's watching this via the non-Zoom channels. It uh, looks like we've got uh, quite a few on Facebook Live, on YouTube Direct. Right. Cool. Well, uh, well, welcome. You've got, you've got an audience. Yeah, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and put it on that line and just give myself a, a, a better visual guide. And uh, go away. I will then proceed to butcher this barrel. So put that right there. Do, do we get to say a prayer? Nah, prayer? I'm not a religious man. Yeah, yeah but anybody else want to say a prayer? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to cut on this side of that line. Okay. Now what I like to do is make sure I'm going to take my barrel off the gun again. Now that I've got it measured properly. Set that aside, don't need that piece for right now. With this, I have a, a vise with some soft jaws in here and I'm just gonna clamp it down to enough to hold it, not, not put I'm a whole lot of tension. That, I, got, I, got to, I got to do a, a repair on a, a really, really, really old gun that I'm gonna need some vice grips for. So you got a vise with soft jaws. Where do you yeah. get those? Uh, you can get the, this is just a uh, drill press vise uh, or a machinist vise and it mounts to the top of a drill press, uh, you know, in these grooves. But I use them for this because they're fairly weighty and they keep the work, you know, kind of low. Um, I also have a, a another small benchtop vise that I can move around. It just clamps to the desktop. Uh, but the soft jaws you can just order on uh, Amazon. They're just cheap plastic. I've made them out of aluminum as well. Uh, I don't, wouldn't use aluminum on guns, but these are nice because they won't score or damage anything. They just hold it snug for me. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take a level and I want to make sure that I'm starting this level. I want the barrel to be level as I make this cut. So there we go. And this is a, a level that's used for just uh, mounting optics and things like that but it just clamps right to the top of the barrel. And it, so I've got a good level starting field here. So now it's up to me to screw it up. And uh, close your eyes if you're um, sensitive to gore. And uh, we're- Everybody is gonna watch, watch and watch. And cringe. So to give myself the best chance of success, I'm going to put on a brand new hacksaw blade. Uh, and the reason any, I don't any use any particular specifications for said hatch axle blade fine toothed, very fine, as fine, fine as you can fine tooth. Uh, you don't want a real, real big teeth on these things for this kind of stuff. Uh, the other thing is, you know, people ask, why don't you use a Dremel or a, you know, it's really difficult on this super hardened steel to not walk the blade or the, the wheel of a Dremel. And then you end up, you know, it's not like it's just cuts like butter all the way around. You end up with a pretty nasty looking uh, a surface that you got to end up working with when you're done to clean up this. I found this way it'd be a little bit more work, but it gives you less work in the end to clean it up and recrown it. So, so no Dremels. No, do not Dremel your guns, please, please. Are, are there any power tools that you would recommend to make this kind of cut? You might try a chop saw would probably work. You know, a, a chop saw with a, you know, metal cutting blade on it uh, might work, but it's still going to leave a pretty nasty, um, 
you know, chewed up face that you're going to have to, to fix. And it's not a big deal. I'll show you when I get this cut off, you know, how I convert it, kind of make it look more like a factory crown, but let's get to cutting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that up with my line. I'm going to make a quick, and I'm not pushing on the saw. I'm letting the saw do the work. I'm not trying to make the saw do more than it's meant to do. And this, uh, the first initial uh, cutting takes a little while because um, I'm cutting down through the top. Once I get through and punch through into the uh, open barrel part, cutting through the sides goes pretty quick. So. So talk amongst yourselves. This is boring. No, no, I, I think we're all riveted, really. No pun intended. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I guess the first time you do it, it's a little mindy. So um, tell us you've done this before. I have. <laughs> okay. the, first, the first barrel I ever chopped was an old 10 gauge, 10 gauge goose gun. And don't ask me why I thought that was a good idea. I was a young man and uh, I don't know why I did it, but we chopped off a uh, 10 gauge old Jed, we called it the Jed Clampett gun because it was like a break top goose gun and chopped the barrel off and took it out to the desert and just pulverized our shoulders with it. I think it was a macho thing, you know? It's, I'm it's a really bad idea. No, you would never do a macho thing. No, but the, you know the thing was the barrel on it looked like a sewer pipe, so it wasn't like the gun was had any value anyway. Is that your sixteen-year-old uh, opinion or your? Uh, uh, I was I was probably in my early twenties, and okay. um, now that gun was so far gone. And don't cut, don't uh, cut your thumb off. We don't want to see you cut your thumb. Oh, off. I'm just using it to keep the blade straight here. Um, I mean, I suppose there are some people that would like you to see you cut your thumb yeah, off. Yeah, well, at least at least as far as I can tell from our Instagram comments. Yeah, do it. So I'm already th I'm through the top of the barrel now. So this this goes a little quicker because I'm just cutting straight down the sides. And and you did you did take the uh, you did take the stop the bleed cast right? I did. Yeah, okay. but uh, I'm kind of. I don't have my tourniquet. Yeah, it's right here on my range bag. Well, there you go. So you that that's the right answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one in the car and then one on my range bag. Yeah, you need one next to you because I don't want you to cut your. Yeah. Tennis. You know, because I I had, I'd hate to have to explain that to the world. Yeah, a tourniquet's not much good at home. Um, that's not true. You well, I mean, if you, you unless you're there. <laughs> But I see guys at the range all the time that, you know, they never bring them. I'm like, well, why don't you, you, you know, they... I like to reiterate for those that joined a little bit late that we are not making a short barreled shotgun. We are not. Uh, no, I mean, no, even, no, ATF guy is right here. Even now, if we measured it from the end of the barrel, you know, we're still way, we're two inches above legal. And the finish uh, crown on the end of this barrel uh, is somewhat shrouded by the handguard. So, you know, it, you don't have to worry too much about it being uh, absolutely, you know, perfect because the, the handguard mounts, clamps over the top like this, and then it runs flush with the end of the barrel. So, um, you know, I mean, as long as it's clean, I think the most important thing with doing this is deburring the inside of that cut making sure that there's no, uh, in, uh, you know, anything that obstructing the, the inside of the barrel, the rest of it is cosmetic. Never in my life did I think I would cut a shotgun barrel off uh, on YouTube. On live TV. Yeah. Quote unquote. Opening myself up to the ridicule and scorn. So here you got to be careful because I know a lot of people have cut stuff and you know how it, you could just take it now and flex it and bend it. And it'll snap off. I'm trying to avoid doing that uh, to make the cut as clean as I can. And I just don't see any value in doing it. Save myself a couple of seconds. So I'm trying to, I'm going very uh, lightly with the saw to keep the, 
you know, cut through as use it to cut through as much metal as I can without breaking anything. Oh, and, and it stopped making that noise. Either that or you knocked the microphone off. Oh, can you not hear me? Oh, no, we can hear you now. No, nope. okay. it wasn't making that squeaky noise. Oh, was it annoying? Because I can try to return back to it. No, you got it back. It's good. Okay, good, good. So, yeah, this is once again, I'm cutting through the meat of the bottom of the barrel now, and that's why it's taking so long. Stop tech talking about cutting through the meat. That's just the meat. My thumbs are still attached. So far. Yeah. Well, now we're going to have a new uh, a new over-under, whether or not he hurts himself. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I have yet to take a serious wound on these, uh, which is, if you'll notice, normally my hands uh, are usually band-aided or, or have some sort of uh, injury on them. Uh, uh, it's going really slow here and really light cuts because I don't want to... I'm just saving myself the headache of finishing this, filing more material off, but we're almost there. It's the 80 20 rule. The last 20% takes a yeah. lot of time. Yeah. You can imagine this steel is getting fairly hot. All right, come on. I think my blade might be suffering a little bit too. So let it cool off a sec. Ah. Screw it. Let's Screw go. It. We're going all the way. We're committed. Uh, now, now I'm, I'm I'm watching sort of with rapt attention. You're going to yeah. cut a thumb off. Yeah, all right. So, yeah. so while you're finishing that up, there were a couple of questions that uh -huh. came in. So we're not just listening to Ed. Why, why are we watching this idiot do this to his gun? And uh, no, not, not that kind of question. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what kind of hacksaw blade was that again? You said it was just a fine tooth. It's just a blade? fine tooth hacksaw blade. Yeah. Okay. And that so. piece of barrel that you cut off, other than uh -huh. using it as a doorstop, any useful repurpose for it? What I'm going to do with it is um, I'm going to use it to test the bluing chemicals. I'm going to strip it and use the same techniques on it that I do the rest of the gun. And then uh, test, you know, whether I blew it or parkerize it. I'll use this because it's the same metal, same age. So I don't know if you can see this now, but we have a finished cutoff barrel. And now I'm just going to take my file and I'm going to clean up all the tool marks on it. And I can see that I have a, it's a little higher on this side. So I'm going to have to take that down and even it out. But that's all right. I don't mind that. I'd rather be too fat. I don't know. If, yeah, you guys can see what's going on here. So, I'm not going to do this all tonight while you guys watch, but I will explain what I'm doing and then finish this up. But so once I get it to that point, I then take a. Um, little file like this and it's it's got a radius edge and then I just lightly go through on the inside edge and knock any burrs off. I'm not I'm trying not to remove anything more than uh, the burrs from the cutting. So I think you're doing that by feel. Yeah I just go around very very lightly like that and then I just use my finger and if it bleeds then I have a burr. Uh, <laughs> So don't then, do that at home. Yeah. And then same thing, but with a heavier file around the outside. I'll just do that. What what kind of file? Are, are both this days? is just a really fine bastard file. Uh, it's called a mill bastard. And then you just kind of do the same thing. And then from here, once I get it to this point, I, I still need to square this up. Uh, but then I take some 600 grit sandpaper. And uh, if... I just keep going until I get all the tool marks out. Let's see. I'm going to have to get it. I'm sorry. I'm out of frame right here. You're just, out of frame. Yeah. Let me see if I can tilt this. There you go. So I take some. And I, and I, and I got to call you out. That's not an, that's not an LGC uh, mat there. It is not. I need to order one. 
and I need to get another one. I destroyed my old one. I just uh, did too much, asked too much of it. So I just keep going like this until I get the, the majority of the tool marks out of it. And then I take some, uh, I go with 320, uh, and then I think it's 660 and then 1200 if you really want to polish it. And then you can use a uh, like flitz or something like that. But since I'm going to re blue this, I don't, I want it to be a little bit rough. Uh, not, not rough, but I don't want it to be like super glassy smooth because it won't take the bluing very well. So, so. so tell me, tell me about what, what the difference between what you're doing and, and, and re crowning the barrel. In the well, if this were a rifle, uh, you know, a rifle, let me get a, a gun with a crown on it. There is no crown on a shotgun barrel. It's just flat. You know, there's just, there, just the wall of the barrel. That's um, the question. That, that you don't need to show it, but I mean, you can, but yeah. Uh, but a, like, but a rifle. That, you hear that all the time, right? You got to yeah. crown the barrel, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, so, but a rifle, you know, if, yeah, if you notice, uh, this is an old Arasaka rifle, but there's a, a bevel, uh, right inside the barrel right here and uh, this outer edge and that's the crown so if that gets nicked or damaged you need to recrown the barrel because it really will affect your accuracy so that's the difference is this has a, a contour and a shape to it versus a shotgun which is just a straight wall even with slugs uh the slugged barrels i don't honestly know I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to do a little more filing while I'm standing here talking, but that's it for cutting a shotgun barrel. I don't know if uh, there are any more be, questions. It's going to be level. It's going to be level against the perpendicular. Yeah. And then what I do, uh, you'll, this one is, uh, needs uh, quite a bit more filing on it, but I take a, like a machinist level and, you know, you can, and you just square it. You know, you down, just keep down towards you, down towards you. Yeah. There you, you, go. Just, you just use a machinist level and, and you just keep filing until it's square. And that's it. Across, that's across it. both axes, right? Yeah. Not just yeah. Vertical. And I, I'd be leery of taking it to a grinder. You might be able to get away with like a, a disc sander, you know, and just go slowly so you don't heat everything up. But filing, it really doesn't take that long. You're not removing that much material when you do this. So, there was a question about potentially. Uh, utilizing this technique on a different shotgun and then adding either a poly choke or screw in chokes. Yeah. I didn't know if you had any additional comment. Well, you'd have to take it to a, a gun. You'd have to take it to a gunsmith and get it threaded for chokes. If you wanted to run chokes on it um, for a poly choke barrel, I've never installed one. I just have one. I, my, my, uh, the barrel I have for my 870 just has a poly choke on it. I don't know about installing them. So, sorry, I wish I could give you more information. So, I'm going to keep going on that. But that, that does imply a internal for the barrel thread, right? As opposed yeah. To yeah. So, anyway, I'll be doing this for a little while until it's square. But when it's done, I'll show it to you in the next episode. Uh, completely finished uh, as far as the the metal work goes. Uh, right. That. That's pretty much it. That's the technique I use. Um, a couple of questions. So, what do we got left tonight? Like, you know, the, you've seen the internals. You've uh, you've appropriately, according to the ATF, chopped the barrel down. Uh, you're wearing flip flops. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, there now we have a riot what? gun. We now have a. Now you have a riot gun. I have a riot gun. Which is, um, I think, I, I think what, what my Model Twelve is. I think my Model Twelve is already a riot gun. So. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to, uh, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, you know, show cutting off a shotgun barrel. thought it'd be interesting. Uh, you know, if somebody has a, uh, an old, say an 870 or Mossberg that has an old field barrel on it, a 28 inch or 30 inch hunting barrel, and they want to repurpose it for, um, you know, home defense or something like that. That's all you do to it. Uh, you know, so, with a, so what's so what's on order? What what what's going to happen next week when you if, if you get the parts in time? Tell if I get it, if time. I get them next week, we'll do it next week. But otherwise, uh, what I have to do is I have to put the handguard on. It's a heat shield and a handguard, uh, and a bayonet lug. So I have to take some of the parts off here. I have to uh, re-engineer. I have to change this plug end out and do a little bit of work on this end because that's where the bayonet locks in. 
uh, where the handguard touches up to it and it's going to have a bayonet lug on it. Um, and then I also have, there's three screws. The, the, the uh, handguard comes over the top like this and then there's a bottom plate and you have to channel the bottom of the barrel just slightly for those screws to pass through and clamp down. I've never done it before, so it'll either be glory or tragedy. I don't know. So what's the purpose of the handguard? Uh, it's a heat shield. So, what so, that so when you're just slam firing the heck out of this thing in a trench, you can touch the top of the gun without burning your hand. So you're holding it while you're doing it? So yeah, one, you know, you can hold it. One hand it. over, one hand under? Yeah, you could C-clamp it or, you know, it just gives you a, a, a little more real estate so you don't burn yourself. Uh, and, and then it, I what, also... Is it maple or something? What's, what's it made of? I'm sorry? Is it maple? What's it made out of? Walnut. Oh, no, the handguard is metal. It's all 100% metal. Um, and then I also have to... I have the correct sling swivel that goes on the butt here and it's inlet into the stock. So I have to uh, trace it out and then get some fine chisels and inlet it in. Um, and then that's that, then it becomes a uh, trench gun. So At that point, I'll going to be seeing some pretty awesome stuff next week. Right? I hope so. I hope you, I, well, I hope people enjoy it. It's uh, it's something I've always wanted to do and I didn't want to spend five grand on the, on a trench gun. So I figured I'd just make one. That, and that, I I've chopped barrels on, like I said, old beat up Mossbergs and things like that to make them um, home protection guns. You know, you can, you can pick up an old beater uh, hunting shotgun and repurpose it. If you don't want to buy a new barrel uh, by, you know, rebarreling a shotgun is really simple on most of them, but some people don't have the money or don't, they don't want to uh, bother with it. Yeah. So I, can, you can, I can buy, I can buy a barrel from my Mossberg for a hundred bucks. Yeah. So quick, quick, quick question, which is related to a question that I'm sure Kyle was about to ask, but I'm going to uh -huh. beat him to it. Uh, how, how much did the kit cost you back? Okay. The gun was about two twenty. The handguard uh, all in was 207 shipped. The swivel and the magazine cap, uh, those were ridiculously expensive. They were like 30 bucks a piece, but they're, they're made to the correct specs. And uh, so that, that's, that's the price list for the trench gun portion of it. And then I uh, still have my eye out for a 1917 bayonet. Uh, yeah, that was, it, that was something that somebody said that's, that might cost you. Yeah. Yeah. There, uh, yeah. I haven't seen one for less than 150 that, and that it looks like it was dug out of the, the trench. Um, <laughs> so it's, you know, I yeah, might, somebody, I might end up getting a, saying 500 bucks. Yeah. I, I'm, I'll keep an eye out for one, but I'll probably get a replica until I can find one. Yeah. Cause I can't imagine shooting a trench gun without a bayonet. That's the whole beauty of the thing, but it's a long pig sticker bayonet. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's a 1917 bayonet, 17 inch blade. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's, it's basically a short sword. Yeah. Um, it's, are we, uh, we want to wrap this up? Or yeah, you, that's pretty yeah, much I mean, it. I mean, you, we can watch you file this for the next half hour. <laughs> well, I don't think that's very compelling. But anyway, that, I just wanted to show, you know, I file it down and get it to the profile that I like. And uh, then I take sandpaper, you know, and get finer and finer grades until I get all of the saw marks out of the face of it. And, um, and I leave it just to, not quite super smooth because I, I'm going to re blue it or parkerize it. And I want that to uh, be able to take the chemical. So, um, you know, uh, and that's pretty much it. And then, then, re then I'll reassemble the gun when everything's fit and uh, take it out to the range. I'll, I'll uh, see if I can get somebody to film me shooting the thing and you guys can see it, you know, in action. And then I'll uh, tear it all down and refinish everything. I'm not going to refinish the stock. I like all the nicks and dings and history on the stock. I, I don't see any reason to mess with that. It's not cracked or broken anywhere. Um, so, and, and, and the reason I have to refinish it is because the uh, the heat shield and handguard come in the white, so they're just bare metal, and it would look wrong to have this brand new bare metal piece on an old gun like that so it needs to be blue to protect it anyway so i figure if i'm going to blue that i might as well just go all in and do the whole gun so i, I might uh before i blew it sh show you how to do a good good uh bluing job on one okay. fun kyle we got anything else 
Um, no, not that I've seen that you hasn't already been answered. Outstanding. So All right. Scott, once again, thank you very much for walking us through this. Yeah. We're look forward to next week, provided the parts arrive. If they don't arrive, you're planning on doing uh I'm going I have okay, I have uh back to the auction. <laughs> I picked up <laughs> this little uh crappy revolver, and I'll show you that it's empty. Uh it's a little H and R. It's called the American double action. And uh, I don't remember what I spent. It was like $20 and it didn't work. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, so like, like the idiot that I am, I bought it and I uh, wanted to see, you know, just, just test my skills. Can I get it up and running for a $20 gun? What the heck? Um, and so I did, I took it apart. I cleaned it and uh, diagnosed what the problems were found the parts, put it back together, and now it works. Outstanding. So that's going to be our lesson next week if the parts don't arrive. Yeah, I figured I'd show you how to, you know, take down one of these things. The H&Rs and the Irish Johnson are pretty similar. And talk about kind of sourcing the parts for them and uh, see if we can, you know, get these guns back to robbing gas stations like they were intended. Jesus Christ. All right. So <laughs> we, got, we got a plan. We got a plan for next week. All right, then. Uh, I want to I want to thank uh, Scott. Thank you so much, Kyle. Yep. Thank you so much for uh, riding herd on the questions. Thanks for all the folks that uh, joined via Zoom. Thanks, and Danielle, all, for herding the cats. Exactly, and all the other folks that were on every other freaking channel that we decided to put this on tonight. Which Yay! Is thank TV, you, Oliver. YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, Twitch. Welcome to the party. Uh, yeah. we're, gonna, we're probably going to do this uh, going forward. So uh, when we got it, when we got a show, we're going to put a show on. Yeah. And if you have any suggestions of dumb things you want to see me do to guns, uh, give me a holler. Yeah. Give so, us a holler and uh, join the club. Come to the discord, ask real questions because we're, we're going to ignore everything else. Yeah. All right, boys and girls, we are done. Thank you. See so you in much. the pub.